What is going on members of the Shy Guys squad and welcome back to another Wi-Fi battle here on the channel. Today we're facing off against Reckless Bat, otherwise known as Nick. And uh, we are bringing you guys with a UU battle this time with a brand new team. And I think I'm just going to stick to this layout with just my face cam and the battle so you guys can see. And I'll quickly go over, where's my, my phone is over here so I gotta get that prepared. So I got that on the side. But yeah, we're having a UU match here today, and I will show you guys the team in a second. I'll just take a picture of my opponent's team first, so I am prepared. So let's see what our opponent has brought to the table today. Thank you, phone. Let me open you real quick, so I can access my images. We have about an, a minute and a half to select our moves. Oh, i got text, I'll check later. Um, so our opponent is bringing Infernate, Cresselia, Crobat, Aerodactyl, probably Mega, um, Frostlass, and Gudra. Now our team, I'll show you guys on the bottom screen, is Ruby, the Rose Raid, because Ruby Rose. We have Ready in 5 Min, which is the Rotom Heat, Amethyst, the Gudra, Bubblegum, the Sylveon, Azrael, the uh, Mega uh, Absol, Azrael is a angel who, a fallen angel or something like that, and Maverick, uh, shout out to Jack for that name. Our own Crobat, which is defensive with Cross Poison, Brave Bird, Roost, and Defog, I think. Um, looking against this team, I want to lead. Ro uh, I want to lead Rotom. I might give off that I'm Scarf really fast, but this team is more uh, more so centered around Ruby and Mega Absol because those are two monsters that I don't really use a lot. So um, I'm pretty interested and pretty excited to use those two. It's a couple months that I never really use, so it's um, kind of excited for that. See how they perform in the tier. Um, I used Abs. No, I've never used Abs properly before. So Frostas is coming out here as the lead, and I am going to lead with ready in five minutes. My Rotom Heat. Now looking at his team. I want to trick my scarf to Cresselia at some point, so I'm going to preserve my scarf on Rotom for now and just going to Volt Switch out of here. Because uh, Frostas can be a problem, it's probably Sash Stack, uh, Sash Stack lead, uh, Sash Spike Stack with Destiny Bond. Because fast Destiny Bond is really good in UU because there aren't a lot of fast things in the tier. So having something like a Frostlass is really nice for that kind of stuff. I did not really anticipate to see a Frostlass in this uh, tier yet. And also don't mind the Maison wins. I kind of got off a of hand when I was going. I was like, oh shit, yeah, they are never going to see this. So the Volt Switch is going to do about 49%-ish from what it looked like right there. Just under half. And I think I can very safely and very comfortably switch into Azrael and see what he wants to do. Now he can obviously Destiny Bond and he can keep on spamming Destiny Bond, but on my side I can just go for that. So now he knows he can't spike stack anymore because my Absol is out here. Now he he probably wants to click the um, Destiny Bond button, but I will rather reveal my Sucker Punch in case he decides to attack me on the... I don't know, why would he attack me on the Protect? I don't know. But you know, we are going to get our uh, Mega Evolution off, and I'm telling you guys right now, Mega Absol is beautiful, but Shiny Mega Absol is so beautiful. It's just regular Shiny Absol, just look at those, those green piercing eyes and the red like sight. This is also a contender for the name of Ruby, because of the Crescent Rose. Maybe an RU, maybe another day Absol will call you Crescent Rose or something. But uh, our opponent here is clearly thinking about what he wants to do. Uh, may not have Destiny Bond, uh, who knows. Trying to weigh his options probably, thinking if I go for Destiny Bond I can eliminate a huge threat, but on the off chance that he doesn't uh, Destiny Bond. On the off chance that he wants to attack me or something, that could be nice. He's probably uh, weighing his options of being Pursuit Trapped. Uh, if I was my opponent, I would personally click the Destiny Bond, but in fact he is going to switch out. Very interesting play by my opponent right there, and into the Aerodactyl. A very nice counter to Mega Absol due to uh, Aerodactyl's immense speed stat. It's easily going to be able to force me out, and he did lock me into a position where I was really scared, because I did not... <coughs> I don't really want to... I could try to Sucker Punch again, but... As we know, Absol is really frail and is meant as a late game cleanup. 
He's probably going to go for a rock type move because my team really struggles against that. So I could realistically just go for the sucker punch and see how it fares against him. So I feel like that's what I want to do just to get off some uh, chip damage and then rather bolt switch again with my Rotom and then see what his play is from there. So yeah, I'm going to click the Sucker Punch here. A judgment has been set. Let's see what we can do. It does a clean miss. Oh, that is unfortunate on my opponent's part right there. I'm really sorry about that, Nick. But you know, that's what happens when you run uh, Stone Edge. It's an 80% accurate move and you do miss sometimes. Now, I'm thinking my opponent wants to spare this Aerodactyl because it still does a lot of work to my team. And he probably wants to switch this thing out. So I'm going to click Knock Off here, expecting and not offensive move. Look at that prediction, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that prediction. Now let's see how much a knockoff does to this Aerodactyl. I am max attack Absol, and that does so much damage. I feel like he personally just wants to attack me straight up here just, you know, because he can't win this 1v1. He might switch, he might not, he might stay and just try to pick me off. But my judgment has been called. I am going to click Sucker Punch against this Aerodactyl. A Mega Aerodactyl is a very scary mon because it's incredibly fast, it has a very good ability, though sometimes I kind of wish it got something a little bit better. But the Sucker Punch goes off and the Mega War goes uh, in favor of the Absol due to some proper predictions on my end. So that is very nice, we do outspeed everything else on his team from what I recall except for this. Crobat is kind of a threat. U-turn is a very obvious play. In fact, I'm actually going to scout him out and see what he wants to do. This is why I originally had Psycho Cut on Absol, but in the end, it doesn't really matter. It's a Crobat. So he is going to U-turn, which is the obvious play right there. And if I switch into my own Crobat, what does he switch into? I'm guessing Cresselia, maybe? Let me check my moves real quick on my Maverick. I have Defog and Roost, so I can get away my Spike. I can get away the Spikes that he set up earlier. So I'm going to go into Azrael, and I'm probably going to try to defog the spike away because I don't want to take 12.5 every time I switch into one of my uh, less offensive, or my grounded offensive Pokemon. So I feel like my best play here is he's probably going to switch into either Gudra or Infernape maybe. Possibly Cress, because Cress is fat. He could switch into Frostlass, but if he switches into Frostlass, I'm dropping a Brave Bird. Because I don't want him. Okay, so in comes Gudra. This hurts me. Ah. Uh, this hurts me even more because it's shiny. Mm, I'm triggered. I am, in fact, the slightly more defensive variant of Crobat, though. He's probably going to just drop a Draco, but to be fair, I just want to defog this one layer of spike away because next time I can switch I can switch in Absol pretty safely against Frostlass, so I want to get this one spike away. Now, I could have ran Dawn Fan, but I want to use Crobat, man. You don't see Crobat as much as Dawn Fan, in my opinion, when it comes to Wi-Fi battles in UU. Now, fair enough, my opponent has a Crobat as well, but his mascot is also Crobat, because it's Reckless Bat. So, I'm going to get those spikes away, he's going to go for the Dragon Pulse, and look at that beautiful dragon. It's the, wrong, it's the wrong type of dragon, but it's still a beautiful dragon nonetheless. Now that does a lot of damage, and I do not approve of the abuse right here. Now he could very easily predict a switch into Sylveon, and if that happens, his switch in is Crobat, I think? could very well predict that. He could also predict a U-turn or anything along the lines of that. I'm thinking maybe possibly not. Nah, I'm just going to go into the bubblegum. If he predicts it, it's a good prediction on my opponent's part. I do not have U-turn. In fact, I'm uh, to attack with Roost and Defog. And I'm going to switch into Sylveon here. And he is going to go for the Dragon Pulse. He's just going to go straight on the offense. Don't even consider second options. I want to predict the Crobat to come out and click Psyshock, even if he doesn't, Gudra still doesn't appreciate a physical attack, and nothing on his team really likes a Psyshock barring the Cresselia, so I'm going to go for a Psyshock right here. If he switches into Crest, that's a good play on my opponent's part, um, but if he doesn't, I get a, a lot of damage off on basically anything on his team. Even if he decides to stay in and Sludge Wave, which I know Gudra can, uh, and with this really good special bulk, uh, Hyper Vo I feel like Psyshock would do more than a Hyper Voice, and I'm not perfectly sure about that, but I am also a Spadef Sylveon, so with Wish Protect and Psyshock Hyper Voice. So it just uh, remains to see if I can um, 
hurt his team a bit with the Sylveon. He could always expect like specs, or if he has watched my channel, he could expect me to be the Scarf Hyper Beam set that um, Bidoof, um, Bidoof Crazy brought, and that that was a glorious set. I really enjoyed that. He brings in Twilight, which I'm assuming is the Crest. Yes, indeed, that is the Cresselia. I'm just gonna go for Psyshock on this thing, and uh, in fact, I am going to let this thing get its leftover recovery. I'm gonna set up a wish and then switch in, uh, hard switch into Rotom. Just in case he wants to go for some shenanigans. I'm gonna set up a wish right here. That was enjoying me. So he's gonna set up a Calm Mind right here, and I'm not okay with that. I'm really not. So I'm gonna set up a wish right here, and I'm gonna go into Rotom, scaring him out with a trick. Also, Wish is such a nice animation, man. I don't know what it is, but Wish is such a nice animation. Now, right here, I'm going to switch right back in I'm gonna switch into my Rotom right there sorry about the doorbell but some people in my house are kind of popular like these children they play a lot together and one of my family members is quite the popular person now he has two comments right here oh Jesus stop uh, but anyways um, I'm just gonna click the trick right here if he switches out that's fine by my uh, that's fine by me but I really want to trick this Crest if he decides to stay in, because Rodan can't really do a whole lot to him, and uh, getting giving him the Choice Scarf would be um, an advantage on my end, of course, because it forces him to switch a lot. So he is in fact going to switch in. What is he going to bring in, though? He's going to bring Jaden, which probably is the Infernape. Ah, uh, that's a nice play on my opponent's part right there. Now I have to deal with a... Uh... Now I have to deal with a Choice Scarf. Oh, he was Scarf. Okay. So he is a Choice Scarf Infernape. Is he just gonna drop the Close Combat though? Is he just gonna drop the Close Combat? Is he gonna U-turn? I'm just gonna Volt Switch. There seems to be a lot of stuff happening in the background, but... I'm gonna see, he's just gonna drop the Flare Blitz. This man is going in. But Rotom can obviously take that. It is a Rotom after all. He's going to take some uh, recoil damage and some volt switch damage. Uh, Rotom can safely switch in here just a couple other times. And his Infernape is already weakened to the point of under 50%, which is really nice as well. I don't think he's quite in range just yet, but we know he is Scarf, so my switch-ins are very limited. I feel like Gudra can switch in, of course, because he is the uh, he's locked into Flare Blitz. And when Gudra can take a um, Darmanitan's Flare Blitz, so this is nothing. Now, what is my what is the expected switch into this? Uh, I mean, I guess there's always his own Gudra, um, this Cress. He could stay in. I could switch into Frostlass. I'm just gonna click Outrage, man. I'm just gonna click Outrage. Let's see his play. It's Twilight. He switches into the Cress. Probably physical defensive, but we're gonna go for Outrage. This is what a Gudra looks like. Fight. I did, a, I did a good chunk for being Cresselia, but that's obviously Fist Def Calm Mind. That's annoying though, but every time Rotom switches in, uh, it forces the Crest out due to Trick, and I will always click Trick against it, even if he switches into the Infernape. Now, he's gonna set up a uh, Calm Mind right here, so I'm hoping I can get a one, uh, two turn Outrage instead of a one turn, and then try to play around it. Now, Crest is always super annoying, that's just how Cresselia is. Now if we go for second outrage, you see we drop it under 50% right there, and we're locked into a three turn outrage, but right the, here, this turn, he's probably going to moonlight. Uh, that would be the best play on my opponent's part, of course, get as much HP as possible. And there we see the moonlight go off, Cresselia is just going to... Am I going to have Clefable, uh, sweet, uh, Clefable, uh, cr um, Clefable, Cresselia, thumbnails back to back? Can't do that. There we go, uh, get a 3 turn Outrage. Um, Gudra did some hefty damage to this thing though, like, it, bear in mind it did heal up and it can, it's apparently faster than me. So, I, th is he speed invested or are we, has he just been really lucky with speed ties? I'm gonna pull a hard switch into my, um, Azrael, and then I can click knockoff on anything on his team. Because nothing on his team appreciates the knockoff from Absol. So that is what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to hard into Absol and then see what his plays from there. If he moon blasts, which he very well could, that's a good play on my opponent's part. But if he goes for the Psy Shock, then, you know, I got a pretty safe switch in. He does go for the moon blast, and we do lose our Absol right there. So that is very unfortunate. Absol is frail as hell, goddamn. 
Oh, and now we lost one of our main Cresselia counters. That sucks. It sucks a lot. Uh, that really, really sucks. But that means Rotom comes in. And once again, I will just click Trick. There's no point in trying to play. I'm going to click Trick against it. He can switch out all he wants. But I'll set him up in a situation where he has, where he is forced to switch out. And with Cre when Cress comes in, I will always switch into Rotom. Rotom is uh, like the main way to force this thing out and refrain it from healing. Now bear in mind, I played Absolute very, uh, pretty poorly in the late game of this match. I am just once again going to go for the trick as he switches into Frostlass this time. So now he's a Choice Scarf Frostlass and I am a Focus Sash Rotom? Question mark? Probably. Mm, I got a Focus Sash indeed, so yeah, now I'm a Focus Sash and he can set up all his spikes and all his other shenanigans. You can always easily also go for the Shadow Ball to try to pick me off. But in fact, he goes for the Destiny Bond. I don't think I'm in range to get picked off. I'm pretty sure I'm not in range. And I, if I can go into... Um, don't get a high roll. There we go. So I can just go um, into Sylveon, go for a Wish, and switch back into Rotom. Because he has to break in turn. Uh, or I could go Wish into Maverick and get my Crobat back up again. I can get it situated. Now he has two Scarf for Slime Team. I have a Sash Rotom that I could try to get back up because he is forced to either stay in or switch out. And I'm just going to use this turn to Wish and try to get my Rotom back up. So he's going to withdraw his process here. Uh, and that's playing his part. He's probably going to switch into Twilight again. This thing is going to be a nuisance for me to deal with because now I can only give it a Sash and steal its leftovers. But once again, that's just going to be a whole situation of back and forth, back and forth. Um. I could try to click Hyper Voice against it and see what it does, but I doubt it will do any good. So, my play right here is to... Is it going to Maverick? No, it's not Maverick. Is it Rotom? Trick at this Focus Sash to get rid of its light, uh, leftovers? Because getting rid of uh, uh, Cresselia's as leftovers is a beginning. Ready in 5 minutes comes on out. Uh, he's going to go for a Calm Mind once again, just doing the whole... Uh, Cresselia charade again. This is why Cresselia is so annoying. I wish. Imagine. Imagine Hoop Unbound against this thing. That would be beautiful. Just think Hoop Unbound just absolutely destroy Cresselia. It's a dream. Now, once again, he's probably going to switch. But I'll just tr click Trick. I have 10 of them, and I've used two. Uh, this is a mon I'm probably going to have to get fixed again, where I put on three PP ups on each of the attacks. Uh, something I definitely may have to do right there. Now, um, I'm not anticipating him to switch out this time, just for the fact that he gains Focus Sash and not a Scarf, so he's not forced from, uh, taking the whole charade of, uh, like, scarfing himself into Calm Mind. So he is, in fact, just gonna go for another Calm Mind, and I'm gonna put on a Will-O-Wisp on this thing, try to get some residual damage, as well as Volt switching out into a physical attacker on the following turn. Now, unfortunately, we do not have, um, we do not have the, uh, we don't have the Absol anymore, which is very sad, uh, because Absol would have been absolutely phenomenal against this thing, but, <sighs> I digress, um, I messed up, and, uh, now I'm in this situation where I have to deal with an annoying as fat uh, lunar Pokemon thing. I'm very aware of Cress. I'm very aware of how bulky it is. I've used it for those of you who don't, uh, for those of you new to the channel or who hasn't just been here during MPL Season 2. Uh, it was one of my main walls in MPL Season 2 and it brought me all the way to victory. So this thing is at plus 3 right now and it's probably, there's nothing I can do to stop this thing from getting to plus 6. Now I could always just bolt switch right here, try to get into something slightly more offensive and see how I can deal with it from there. I could go into, I can go into, I guess, uh, I can go into Sylveon and Hyper Voice and just pray to god that I get a crit. I know that about, like, Gudra's uh, Outrage does about like 50% if I get a crit on it, it does 25 uh, low. It's obviously, I don't, I don't remember. What is, I'm just gonna look at Ruby's moves. I give her Dazzling Gleam and... I'm thinking Gudra. 
I want to keep my Rotom intact because now I have a Sash on it as well. Um, it's very tricky to play around a Cresselia because this thing is at plus three right now. This is gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt a lot. But the thing is, things if Guda dies, I can't really hurt this thing. Like I have a Maverick that can go for Bright Bird, I guess. But I'm not offensive. Is it a speed tie or is he just naturally faster? I want to look up uh, Cresselia's speed. I'm not gonna calc anything. I'm just curious to uh, his speed. Um, let me check you. you. Uh, Gudra. I have no speed investments in Gudra, so I just want to check Gudra's speed at level 50. I could always check base test. I know Gudra's base 80. That I'm very familiar with. But what is Cress? What's Cress's base speed? 85, okay, so he does always outspeed me, so it's not like a fluke or something where it's like, oh, he outspeed you, ever. he has just won the speed tie every single time, no. One great counter to this thing is just Agron, because what, what is a Cresselia to an Agron? I mean, I, I guess my best play here is just a Brave Bird, and then watch him Moonlight in my face, so it's sad. I really, unless I get a crit right here, I don't think I can take this thing out. And I feel like I'm just gonna lose. Oh, we d we do get a crit, and he's Rocky. No, he's not Rocky Helmet. And he goes for the Moonlight. I think we just lost right here, and I just I I, I really just, I hate Crest. Crest is so annoying. People who use Crest, like I understand it. They need a bulky wall, but this thing is ridiculous. Like, let me let me read it off for you guys. I mean, for those of you who don't play too much. Let me read off Cresselia's uh, defense uh, stats for you guys. 120 HP, 120 defense, and 130 spadef with access to Calm Mind. This thing is actually unkillable at certain times. If I would have managed to play, if I would have not switched in my, uh, if I would have not switched in my um, Absol on a on the Moonblast, I could have taken this thing out a long time ago. I just need a safe switch, but I went for the risk, and it was not worth it. I played with a 50-50, and I lost it. Because he played sa he played safe, because if I stayed in, he would have gotten super effective damage off on Gudra. And if I switched down into Absol, I would have taken, I would have died, which was what happened. So, a very nice play on my opponent's part, and uh, that misplay cost me the entire game. Because I sacked off... Absol when I didn't want to do it this crest can just sweep my entire team now it's sitting at plus three plus three and there's nothing I can do to break this thing down he can just moonlight 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 all the time and this is why crest is annoying and should not even be in UU it's not easy to take down yes you can say there's mega beedrill yes you can say there is uh there are a few checks to it but ones though, like, on a full team of six, of course Crest is going to have something to build around that. And honestly, I think Crest fares very well in OU as well. I've not tested it. I might want to, next time, I, I, sometime in the future, check how Crest does in the OU tier uh, as a defensive wall right there. Uh, right here, he's going to go for the Psy Shock though, and at this point, I don't have anything to take him down. I don't think a Leaf Storm Crit can kill him. Uh, Crobat's gonna die to the crest right here. He's gonna take some damage. My out, my physical attackers are dead. I have a Rotom, a Heat, and, and Ruby. I'm gonna go into Ruby. I'm gonna go for the Leaf Storm, and I'm gonna see how it does. I'm actually gonna damage calc. I don't like damage calcing uh, when playing on show, like I, when playing a Wi-Fi battle. But this I actually have to do. So I'm just max special attack. Uh, I'm just gonna look up Rose Raid. Rose Raid, Offensive Hazards, Timid, Max Max, versus a Cress, Call Mind, uh, plus three, plus three, level 50, versus level 50, Rose Raid. I don't like to do this, but I need to just see what, how much a Leaf Storm actually does. Leaf Storm does like 24% max. Unless I get a crit, of course, in which case I kill him. Wow, a crit Leaf Storm is that much? I mean, I mean, all I can do is really just pray to God that I get a crit. That's all I can do. That's, and I miss. And he heals up. Uh, the temptation to just click run right now. Honestly, like, 
I don't like forfeiting matches. But this is just a bad game. This is a terrible game. Like, uh, this is why I hate Cresselia. Cresselia is such a nuisance. Like, I'm really sorry, guys. I want to give you guys some good battles and stuff, but is this really what you want to see? Cresselia, more Cresselia, and then even more Cresselia. I mean, even if I get a crit right now with Leaf Storm, I still kill it. So there's always that chance. Can you do it though, Roserade? Can you get a Leaf Storm crit? That's all I ask of you. No, you can't. Very well. And now you shall die. Thank you for your contribution. Or contribution, I'm sorry. Contribution, what the hell. Thank you, Rose, Ruby, for your uh, contribution. You failed miserably. But what do we learn from this? Never try. Rotom, Scarf Rotom, I guess we can click Overheat. I mean, we have a Sash, so he can't really kill it. He can't Oko us. Like, at this point, it's just use your hardest hitting attack and pray to God you get a crit. Come on, Rotom. Get a crit. Get a crit. Get a crit, please. Crit, 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 crit. Nope. And Moonlight. How many Moonlights have we used? Oh. He's Ice Shocks. Oh, he has the sash. I have the leftovers. I forgot about that. I mean, all I can do right now is pray to God that I land an overheat and take this thing out. Please. Roto. Oh my god, it died. Oh my god, it died. <laughs> the flying saucer thing... It's dead. I'm gonna ask for some editing tips and see if I can make like this entire section just an annoyance. Huh. It's dead. I'm pleased. I'm very pleased. It's fucking dead. It's actually fucking dead. He's actually dead. Fair enough, he can just click Flare Blitz right now and win, but... He's actually gonna click Close Combat. Can I bring this back with Hyper Voice? No, I cannot, because Frost Slash and then he just goes for Destiny on. So that sucks. Um, I mean, brought it down to a 3-0. I can stall out Destiny Bond too. Then there's Gudra. I can beat Gudra. I can beat Maverick. I could bring this back. Because Choice Scarf. I mean, I could just Psy Shock anything right now. Because he has this, Crobat, Frostlass, and Gudra left. So I could just Psy Shock. He could choose to sack off his Infernape. Or he can switch in. I'm hoping that he switches into Maverick right here. Well, Frostlass. He sacks out the Frostlass, which is fair enough on my. Uh, for me. I'll do this. And then I'm gonna put my bell and do not disturb. So Skype doesn't pop up either. And Frostlass goes down. Uh, now it's a 3-0. In his favor, of course, since he decided to switch out. Uh, he switches into Infernip again. He's probably gonna go for the Flare Blitz. I feel like I can take one, but of course I'm in, gonna be in range of the next monster attack anyways. But I can put it down to a 2-0 at least. That's that's cool. Yes. I mean I can protect, just you know, just scatter what he does. He's obviously a Scarfape, as we know from the trick. Um, let's see here, he goes for the Flare Blitz. Uh, I could wish, I could wish Protect, see if I can get some HP. Cause I don't know, I'm still, I'm still very bulky. I'm a Sylveon after all. He's probably Adamant. Uh, that does a lot of damage. I don't like it. I really don't like that. So I'm gonna go for a Wish. Then I'm gonna go for a Protect. I'm gonna go for another Wish again, and then. That's on the turn that he dies, and then I can protect against something, and then I can see if I can stall this out. I'm gonna, like, this is the only way I can try to come back from this. You don't understand. Uh, like, this is the only way, this is the only chance I have of winning. Like, I mean, fair enough, it's for fun, but this is the one chance I have to bring this entire game back. And all of this happened because I switched into Absol at the wrong time. Uh, so... 
Uh, fair dues, I guess. I mean, all I can do is just wish right here and pray to God he doesn't kill me. Because he's locked into Flare Blitz. He's going to die on this turn. Then he's going to switch into Bra uh, Brave Bird. Uh, not... <laughs> he's going to switch into Crobat here. Because there's no point in switching in Gudra. If he switches in Gudra, I can just set up and wish... Wish Protect, Wish Protect, Wish Protect, Wish Protect back until I'm healthy. And, like, this is the only way for me to bring it back. Uh, I'm going to reply to my friend. Um, doing... Doing a... Battle. Well, oh, shit. Um, I'm just going to Protect again. Because I did set up a Wish against the Infernape. So, this is the one way I'm trying to come back. He has the cross poison, uh, which probably takes me out. Um, I mean, I could always try wish protecting against this thing as well and see how much a cross poison actually does, and then scout out how much he does against uh, the Gudra. I mean, I could. I could Psy Shock and just try to kill it. I mean, I think it's in my best play to just bring this as far down as I possibly can, see if he goes for the Cross Poison or Roost or whatever he goes for. His, like, his best play is still just naturally just Cross Poison, Cross Poison until I die. Uh, and he, he in fact goes for the Cross Poison, let's see how much it does. It does in fact take me out, so uh, good game to Nick. Uh, well, I wouldn't... I'm gonna say good game to be nice, but in my personal opinion, it wasn't really the best of games due to Cresselia. I feel like Cresselia just ruined games in UU. They got rid of the most annoying things like Amoongus and stuff. Now we just need crests out of UU and it will be beautiful. This tier would be sa saved. Um, to think that crest was RU back in the day. That's insane. I remember that still. But GG to Nick, uh, Reckless Bat, and um, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this battle or at any moment when, for example, crest died, make sure to hit that like button down below to show your support. And um, subscribe if you're new. The Shy Guy Squad is ever expanding on the road to 500 subscribers. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.